Graham, a bit of a negative start this morning, but we have had three positive days on the chart. Do you think we're going to continue the rally that we saw towards the end of last year into 2010? That's a great question and a, a difficult one to answer. My sense, I think along with a lot of South Africans and in fact a lot of investors worldwide, is we, we had a good run. We were anticipating um, a bit of good news to flow. Um, but I think a lot of people feel maybe just a little bit too much too soon. I know I personally would feel very comfortable if I could theorise if the market corrects a little bit um, and then does nothing for a couple of months as your corporate earnings hopefully then start to recover off the low base and then possibly after the World Cup as um, second of the half of the year unwinds, quite possibly we recover as people then start saying, okay, we can see corporate profits into 2011 starting to recover. So, um, Stephen, when you look at, at, at global markets, they're really going nowhere. We must say, I mean, volumes this week have been, been a bit of a joke, but um, you just get the feeling globally that people are saying, you know what, let's just take our foot off the gas and see uh, what the next couple of weeks hold. Richard, good morning. Um, do you think that we, I mean, do you share Graham's caution on the markets or do you think we can still see positive returns coming out of the JSE as we head into 2010, continuing the strong run from 2009? Stephen, I think so. I mean, I'd agree with Graham in the short term. You know, a lot of people are only coming back from leave next week. So I think the liquidity issue is driving the market at the moment. Um, but I think, you know, if you have a look at the year as a whole, there are still sectors where I think you're going to get nice positive returns from. Um, you know, I mean, off the top of my head, we've got good global economic data coming out. We've seen new factory orders positive out of the U.S., um, car sales for December positive um, out of the U.S. as well, which is going to be very supportive, I think, for commodity prices. And you're seeing the likes of copper and um, platinum, which are exposed to, to kind of the broader industrial commodity sectors, um, you know, continuing to go up. And I think as analysts now start inputting these higher sustainable commodity prices into their models. I think the resource sector is one that I think has got good legs into 2010. Would you go along with that, Graham? Um, in terms of the, the, um, the economic data, I, I saw Bill Gross this morning from PIMCO, um, who's I think the world's biggest bond manager, saying that effectively the U.S. needs fresh stimulus because he anticipates in the next three to six months that the effects of that stimulus will start wearing off. And even when you look at the factory orders, for example, when you actually unpack those numbers, they're not quite as, as, as positive. So I agree with what Richard's saying in terms of commodity prices, but we need to remember that uh, maybe oil is, is almost uh, half of where it was at its high, but copper is within $1,000 a ton of, of its best levels ever. Um, so commodity prices have already run quite hard. Um, yeah, so I think while I agree that, that, that the outlook for 2010 is a whole lot better than 20, uh, 2009, um, what I'm saying is I think quite a bit of that good news is, is, is priced in and we need to see the quality of, of economic growth for the next while. I mean, you look in Japan, it just seems as though it's tripping up all over again. So I agree in the sense that emerging markets, I keep saying it principally China is going to grow at a hell of a rate, but at the same time developed economies have got issues and, and amongst those are high unemployment rates. Mm -hmm. Well, Richard, uh, we, we did see some data coming out earlier this week. That was the pending home sales data from the United States, which showed, uh, as Graham was saying, that as stimulus was withdrawn from that, pending home sales did disappoint. And do you think there's any concern that the recovery could stall in the United States at this stage and, and perhaps not support commodity prices going forward? I think, you know, just uh, on the issue of, of um, unemployment in the U.S., the non-farm payroll numbers, I think, come out tomorrow. I think they, they're going to be key. Um, as to the sustainability of a, of a recovery in the U.S. Um, you know, I think government are adamant um, that they're going to provide the stimulus necessary, and that was exactly Bill Gross's commentary this morning, um, and his concern around the bond market, because obviously, you know, to provide stimulus, the U.S. have got to issue treasuries um, to fund that. Um, and it seems just from, from that type of commentary that, uh, that they're still committed to making sure that the U.S. economy doesn't fall in a heap. Well, Graham and um, Richard talking about those commodity prices, you said um, oil still quite far off its highs, copper not so far off. Do you think there's still more, more upside and do you think that those have been priced into our BHP billetons, Rio Tintos, Anglo-Americans, etc.? No, I agree with what Richard is saying, is that if copper is going to hold 7,500, I don't think the analyst body have got 7,500 in, in, in their models. Um, because it's actually been quite a recent phenomenon. It's gone from, from just over 7 to 7,7 quite quickly. Um, 
So no, I don't think um, the, the, the market is, is anticipating it. If these commodity prices hold, then clearly the likes of VHP Billiton and Anglos are here from now going to be delivering wonderful results. All I'm saying, and I'm not, I'm not arguing that, that, that 2010 is going to produce growth, and I'm not advocating a double dip in the US. What I'm saying is that um, maybe you know, where people are saying, let's look for 3% GDP growth out of the US maybe in 2010 and 2011. We just pick up where we left off a couple of years ago. Uh, my sense is that, that because of the high unemployment, which is going to take quite a, quite a while to unwind, let's aim our sights for, for, for GDP growth in developed economies, all of them, the US, UK, Europe, and, and Japan, a little bit low. And let's not start factoring very, very high growth rates. But that'll be more than offset by incredible growth, as I said, out of, out of emerging economies. Mm -hmm. Richard, how about risks to the system at the moment? And of course, we do have that EU delegation going to Greece at the moment. And there is talk that they may not bail out Greece for, from its current troubles. And that, that could pose a risk, obviously, to Europe's recovery, I would think. I guess so. But I, you know, I think in the broader context of, of the impact on a, on a European recovery, I think you know, a country like Greece is, is, is probably quite small in, in the greater context of things. You know, you've got to look to the, the big economies, the Germanys, the Frances, the Italys. Um, you know, and I guess, yeah, I haven't seen any recent data out on those, but uh, you know, those are going to be the driving force behind a European recovery. Well, Graham, just given, given the outlook for commodities at this stage, mm. would you be looking at resources, stocks as investments this year? And which other sectors do you think could be performing well? I think I say the same thing every time. You wait, you, you decide where, where you see value. Um, we were talking about BHP Billiton at 200 Rand not so long ago. Now, at 200 or 210 Rand, BHP Billiton was a great buy because it's a superbly positioned company. It's well run. Um, it's got everything going for it. Uh, and whether you had this big rally that we've seen in the last few weeks in commodities or not, they'll have a good two or three or five years. Um, but I wouldn't be chasing them in the 240s. I think um, mm -hmm. we need to see whether all of this actually holds for, for the next while. So in principle, yes, I believe in, this, in the in demand for, for commodities um, on, on the medium to long term. But at the same time, if you pay 240 or 250, and it goes back to 200, you know, on a, on a one year view, you're not gonna do, do particularly well. So my, my overriding sense is you pick your levels, you put your bids in the market, and you just wait for, for, for things to make sense. Because maybe bulletins and anglos are a little bit more uh, volatile and have the potential possibly to run harder. But the bulk of the market is not going to do that. I think on balance of arguments, there's more merit in waiting a little while rather than paying current prices and praying that everything carries on. Well, Richard, outside of the resources sector, where would you be looking for opportunities in the market at this stage? Well, Stephen, you know, I'd, I'd have a look at the, the companies that have underperformed, um, uh, relatively speaking. So, you know, if you have a look at a Kumba iron ore that I think returned around 106% last year, um, you have a look at a Cecil that returned 5%, and I think an ArcelorMittal that returned about 12 or 13. You know, I'd look at, I'd look at the Cecils and the ArcelorMittals. Um, you know, kind of you know, diversifying your risk a little bit through that. Um, you know, generally the market will tend to switch out of your good performing stocks in the prior year and switch them into your underperforming stocks the following year. Uh, you know, if you have a look at um, uh, iron ore prices, for example, now Kumba iron ores obviously run very hard on the back of uh, an increase in iron ore prices. Those prices have got to filter through to steel prices sometimes. So an Arcelor Metal, you know, to my mind, would be a very good uh, lagging play on, uh, on good iron ore prices. How about smaller caps, Richard? Smaller caps, um, you know, not an ultimate passion of mine, but I think a, a good opportunity for this year. I think those that are particularly um, supported by maybe some sort of corporate activity, um, underpinned by good industry fundamentals, um, you know, that are financially sound, those are the guys that you've got to look to, um, to invest in this year. Mm -hmm. Graham, how, how about you? Where would you be looking? Would you also be stock picking in this market or sector, sector playing? Absolutely stock picking. I think um, I keep saying and have said for, for, for some time, my pick in the last six months has been BHP Billiton, although it underperformed Anglos for some time. I take a slightly different view. I say if I look three or five years forward, I want to be in the one that if everything goes well, I'm going to do very, very well. But if things turn and turn a little bit pear-shaped, that um, I've, I've at least got some downside protection. By being in, in best of class, I think you get that. Um, there's very little I can find to buy right now in the market. I, I'd be buying probably the more defensive things. So your British American tobaccos, um, yeah, so still Astral, defensive mode. St 